In this talk, I will discuss legislative relations between the union and the states as given in chapter 1 of part 11 of the constitution. Article 246 of the Constitution provides for this division or distribution of powers by creating three lists of power in the seventh schedule. List 1, also known as the Union List, List 2 also known as the state list and list 3 also known as the concurrent list. While lists 1 and 2 are about the exclusive jurisdiction of the union and a state legislature respectively, the list 3 subjects may be legislated upon by the union and the state legislatures concurrently. In the case of conflict of jurisdiction, in the concurrent affairs, the union law shall prevail. However, Article 254, Clause 2 permits a state legislature to make a law repugnant to an existing law or an earlier law of parliament subject to the assent of the President of India still parliament will be able to make a law on the same subject including a law adding to amending varying or repealing the law so made by the legislature of a state by virtue of Article 254, Clause 2 itself. In plain language, it means that the state legislatures may overstep their limit on the concurrent subjects only with the consent of the union and still the union legislatures will have superseding power over state laws within the compass of the concurrent list. Even within these restrictions, the state legislatures are not entirely free to legislate. Article 200 confers unlimited power on a state governor to reserve any bill passed by the state legislature for consideration of the president. The article further directs the governor to reserve a bill for the President's consideration if the bill in her public his opinion has the potentiality of so derogating from the power of the State High Court as to endanger the position 
which that court is designed by the constitution to fill. Over the years, the three lists of power in the seventh schedule to the constitution have undergone a few amendments, generally to the advantage of the union. I will suggest, please go through the three lists seriously, three, four times. A close survey of the three lists will show that the supernumerary entries, that is the numbers followed by capital A and capital B, are additions through amendments. They are present in the union list at 2A, 92A and 92B and more so in the concurrent list at 11A, 17A, 17B, 20A and 33A. These entries are powers transferred from the state list to which there was no addition. Several other entries have been substantially amended to the same effect. To put it simply, there is no addition to the state list. There have been additions to the union and the concurrent lists by transfer from the state list. A second point emerges out of this phenomenon. The union list is bigger than the state list along with the concurrent powers on which the union has a dominant share. This extensive union list gives more power to the union than to the states. Over and above this preponderance that is dominance or superiority of the union, parliament has five powers that need a special mention. First, it has the power to legislate on a subject not mentioned in any on the lists that is the so-called residual powers by virtue of entry 97 of list 1. Second, it has the power to legislate on a territory of India not included in a state even though the matter may belong to the state list. Please refer to Article 246, Clause 4. Legislation for a union territory is under the jurisdiction of the union legislature, though, as in the National Capital Territory of Delhi, power may have been transferred to a territorial legislature. Third, if the Council of States declares by a resolution supported by not less than two thirds of the members present and voting that it is necessary or expedient in national interest that Parliament should make laws with regard to 
any subject mentioned in the state list specified in the resolution it shall be lawful for parliament to make laws for the whole or any part of the territory of india with respect to that matter while the resolution remains in force normally the maximum period of operation of the resolution is one year but it is extendable by another year as often as it is felt necessary by the council of states the operation of the law will cease Six months after expiry of the resolution, please refer to Article Two Forty Nine. Fourth, Parliament can make law on any of the subjects in the state list during an emergency. Such law will expire six months after the. termination of the emergency please refer to article 250 fifth parliament can make law for two or more states if the legislatures of such states by resolutions ask parliament to make such a law such laws may be repealed by parliament but not by the concerned state legislatures which can of course ask parliament for repeal please refer to article 252 here it would be relevant to mention provisions of article 246a this article seeks to make a special provision with respect to goods and services tax clause 1 of this article is somewhat unique as it gives concurrent powers both to parliament and legislature of every state to make laws with respect to goods and services tax however clause 2 of this article gives exclusive power to parliament to make laws with respect to goods and services tax where the supply of goods or of services or both takes place in the course of interstate trade or commerce in brief this is about the legislative relations between the union and the states i would request you to grasp it properly so that it may help in proper understanding of the constitution of india administrative and financial relations between the union and the states will be discussed in subsequent talks thanks for patient listening